Hi, we're Barnes and Leslie from The Morning X. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Hey, listen, if we could ask for a small favor, would you mind following our podcast and leaving us a five-star review on our Apple podcast page? That would just mean so much to us. We thank you for taking the time to do that. And now let's get on with the show. Our next guest is an Emmy-winning casting director. A lot of people want to get into the business of show. And I think maybe he can give you some intel about how the industry works because he's done it well enough that he's won an Emmy. So I think he qualifies. Huge. Yeah, his name is Chase Paris. Here's a little bit of Chase talking about one of the shows he cast called Atlanta, which he was part of the casting team. Have a listen. When you're dealing with a show like Atlanta, for instance, um, we're not always dealing with actors. You know, we're, we're trying to represent the city the way that they do. In this show, we're trying to find real Atlantans. Um, and so one of the things that's great about this show is 90% or more of the show were true Atlanta local hires or people who live there were born there. I mean, even as far as Donald being from there, it makes it much more uh, true to what the, the show is doing. Um, and that was one of the better things about casting this show is that if it really felt like a reflection of the people that actually live in the city. And anyone who's from Atlanta will know when they watch it who the actors are from the city and yeah. who aren't. It's, it's, it's as clear as day to them. It is authentic. If you've never watched Atlanta, that is one I highly recommend. I freaking love Donald Glover. But Chase, welcome to the show. Thanks hey. for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Did you listen to 99X back in the day? I grew up on 99X. Oh, love that. It's a oh, big part of my youth. <laughs> thank well, you very much. It's cool to be back and um, and in motion and working, unlike what you're doing right now in the writer strike, <laughs> right? A lot of nothing right now. That's got to be a trip. Yeah, I think what we need to do, though, is ask Chase, when they make the movie or the miniseries about 99X, uh, we're going to hire him to cast. Right. Who would play, you know, Barnes and Leslie? But we could talk about that later. Oh, that's a funny question, actually, for someone <laughs> who's a funny. professional. Who would who would play us, casting Mr. <laughs> casting Rockstar? Well, na- nowadays, with all the AI and uh, CGI, they'd probably just use you and age you down. Oh, that real thing to it. Well, can we just age us down anyway and not even make a miniseries? <laughs> yes, let's just, please. Yeah, let's age us down. So when, like, with Atlanta, Atlanta, with that show, Atlanta, was was that like more of a fun project because you were keeping it authentic? Because no one else knows the authenticity but us, right? Absolutely. And um, I, we gunned for that show early on. I was always a big Donald Glover fan. And when he announced he was making the show, we just knew it was a half hour comedy. If you've seen the show, you know it's it's a comedy, but it's not anything like you've seen before. So it was fun because it was always different, always changing. But also, yeah, you got to really feel like the world you knew was reflected on, on screen. It's a heightened version of it, obviously, yeah. you know, because there was some zany stuff to happen in that show. But, you know, being able to to really uh, showcase your own town was was great. Chase, I've always wanted to talk to a casting director outside of the normal means of, you know, people coming in and auditioning or sending in their tapes. How else do you find people, especially now with like YouTube and TikTok? Are you constantly scouring for new talent? Well, we're always trying to find the next thing or someone fresh and someone new. Um, it is is still mostly the um, the normal process of agents auditioning, and we'll find them through that. But I mean, we still go to showcases every once in a while. And yes, yeah, social media has become bigger um, because the newer generation of talent are finding their feet there. They are creating their own content um, at a pace that's almost impossible to keep up with at times. And so we, um, if you could see my my Instagram feed it ends up being mostly skits or people doing funny things and um, if we can track them down we will uh, it, it, but it is a little bit um, wild west because they're not trained actors they and there's that. not enough time in the day right I mean how yes. how can you do what people don't realize is when you get an audition it's not easy. I mean, you, you. Some people think just like with this business, Leslie. The people who want to just like get, hey, have listeners just get on the mic. Like it's, yeah. it is a craft, and it's something people work at. And you get, you know, you get this form. Like if if Chase is doing an audition and he sends it out to your agent, you get this like multi-page thing. You have to sign stuff to make sure you're not putting it out on social, which is another thing that you didn't used to have to worry about. But now you have people 
putting scripts out. Yeah, it's uh, the secrecy of it all has actually gotten uh, worse over the because everything's so easily accessible and shareable. Um, you know, we we have to make sure things stay um, within a certain bubble. And the good thing is, most actors get that, and and that's the one nervous thing about going outside of that normal yeah. routine. But also, there is a matter of trust. I mean, so say I find someone on the street or in YouTube or someone who's just not a trained actor or been through the rigmarole, right? If I put them on set, what's going to happen? Yep. You know, I, I better hope. We, we mentioned Donald Glover, right? He is great at, at getting a performance out of people. And so is Hero and the people that worked on that show. But maybe a director isn't as experienced or isn't as savvy as, as they need to be to do that. And I've put someone who has no experience to carry the day. It becomes very risky. So, you know, it, it's great to find And it comes back but, on you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Leslie, remember we put, we had interns that thought, oh, we can do it. We literally put them in the room. Room and we left the room. We t- we told the audience, but it was a disaster. Look how bad we are, Barnes. We exactly. still, we still can't get it right. <laughs> Pros. You worked on the TV show. You worked on Ozark, correct? Yes. The thing I love about Ozark, some of the breakout performances, if you look at someone like a, you know, Julia Garner, who now has had so many other epic roles, like Inventing Anna, where she played Anna Delvey. I mean, that one role can break someone for life, honestly. Can you talk a little bit about Ozark? Because obviously I'm a huge fan. I know the show is over, but Ugh. it was shot in Atlanta. Yeah, the the coolest thing about Ozark, and this uh, kind of goes with the Stranger Things of it all, in, in Atlanta to a certain extent, is we, me and my partner Tara got known for casting real people. And, and they weren't real people. They were actors for the most part, but they have these real faces. They feel like, when you watch that show, it feels like the Ozarks. I mean, it was shot yes. in, on Lake Ackworth and Lake Lanier, and, and uh, I have, still have friends that will drive by uh, the blue cat and tell me that oh, that's where they shot Ozark <laughs> um, but it's it, it felt like it didn't feel glossy it didn't feel I mean when we've done shows like a Dynasty where it feels like a soap opera and you're feeling mm-hmm. everyone's pretty and but the shows that we really like and the ones that got us the most notoriety and still get us jobs to this day are the ones that are um, authentic you feel like a, you, you could walk down the street in the Ozarks and find someone that really really came from there absolutely for the people listening that and I get this question not as much as you how do you get into the business and I always say I have no clue what to tell you there is no right answer right and there's no one path right I mean you hear people who went to Juilliard and got all these degrees and they're still auditioning as everyone else and you have people who were found on the street or you know you hear the you hear the 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 tales of people being found in random ways the, the, still the best way to go about it is go get training go make your own content find a, find an agent that's the tried and true method you're going to hear outlier stories and they sound great but the best way is still to start at the ground level get on camera any way you can that can be in a class that can be creating your own content that can be writing to get your own stuff up there um, and then work your way forward it is about getting breaks still you got to be in the right place at the right time you have to have the right role come up for long that you are reading for that you just happen to um, be ready for when it comes and that's where the career takes off I wouldn't um, I wouldn't bank on uh, winning the lottery which I think a lot of people who aren't so industry, many people fantasize it, about it and it's hard it's it's a hard people ask me all the time are you going to get your kids into acting and I could not if they can do anything else because it's a hard road it's a hard road and it takes a lot of rejection this is also fascinating we're talking to Chase Parrish of course he is a casting director with Feldstein Paris. Obviously, we have to talk about Stranger Things. Did you guys already start on the next season before the writer's strike, or you didn't start because of the writer's strike? We did. We have a bank of scripts, which uh, are under lock and key (laughs) that we can't uh, even talk Uh, about, but we did start. I think we hadn't started shooting. We were about a month out from shooting, and we had enough material to to go but um, with the writer's strike and our, our creators being writers and directors everyone kind of in solidarity they they shut down so as soon as we get done with this it's going to be full steam ahead what's funny is the and you won your Emmy for that right for Stranger Things mm-hmm. yep and, and you found wasn't the girl was it Barb who was an unknown yeah yeah. See, there's a story right there. The funny, exactly. so we, we looked for that role for a long time, saw lots of girls, and we just happened to, and sometimes on Stranger Things, we'll see a lot of people per role, especially starting out. 
But that role, we she was at Roswell High School. We were we wow. were just we were going through all these tapes and we went back and we couldn't find the person, so we went and rewatched a lot of them, and we just landed on her, brought her in, and uh, I remember reading with her with the Duffers, and it was just kind of this kismet thing. You knew it when you saw it, but we we initially overlooked her, and she had no on camera experience going into. She had had an agent, but was still in high school when we roped her into that. Well, a lot of actors listen to our show. I know a lot of them, and. One thing I hear them all say is, those guys don't watch all, all the tapes. They don't watch. Do you guys see yes. everything? Yes. We watch every... Uh-huh. That's what I thought. I'm like, why wouldn't they? Well, and there's there's um, there's um overarching rules for other departments in a show, but like casting does their own thing. So I can speak to Tara and myself, and I'm confident about most other casting directors. And you want to find the person. Right. And there's no <laughs> point in, why would I request something that I'm not going to watch? And why right. would I waste your time? I, and I think I think people like to think that we like to waste our time and theirs. No. I think they're trying to make themselves feel better and say, oh, well, they're just not even going to watch it anyway. Way. It is, and it's uh, it's it's that mindset. Sometimes it's like, well, why even try if they're not going to watch? We do. We watch yeah, all the crazy. tapes. We watch well, all the tapes. Yeah. Congrats to you and your partner Tara on the Emmy because that's awesome. And Stranger Things, I guess. When does it come back? You know, they're going to shoot for uh, I think uh, I think about seventy two weeks. So they're probably not airing till twenty twenty five. If wow. I hey, don't forget, guess. don't forget, you're casting the Morning X. Oh yeah, the, uh, the, you no. know the new series coming out. Just AI. wanted to remind you of that. Yeah, it'll just be AI. Thank, thank you, good. Chase. <laughs> Chase Paris, go ahead and give out your uh, cell phone number for those who want to get in the business. We'll yes. wait. We'll wait. No, no. <laughs> good to see you, man. Take it easy. Chase Paris. The Morning X. 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 With Barnes and Leslie. 99X. Nine, nine.